To dye this pair right here, I'm going to use a bottle of Sriracha to make it that nice, icy, blue, red, green concoction. Yo, what's going on everybody? Thank you for tuning in and thank you for watching. I'm coming at y'all with a soul dye tutorial. This is going to work for translucent icy soles. This might actually also work on a solid outsole. So if you want to try it out, go ahead and let me know. Just drop it in the comments so everyone knows if it works on a solid sole. But I do know it works for the icy, translucent kind of looking soles. So let's get right into it. First off, I want to give a big shout out to my man Shion for teaching me how to do this. I actually learned it through his video. So if you want to check out his YouTube channel, the link will be in the description. And if you're wondering what I'm doing with this pair right here, I'm going to make a Shiracha Custom. I already painted the midsole all coke white. So y'all can see it right here. I used the flat white from Angelus Direct. And we're going to do the red hits on the icy parts right here. And then I'm going to send it off to my man Kickstradamus to get them nice and shirashed out. But hey, before I talk too much, let's get right to the materials list so we can get into this tutorial. I'm going with red leather dye on this one just because I want to give it that Bread 11 kind of look. So this red will be great for that. You can go ahead and check out the site. There's a whole bunch of different dyes you can use. You really have to play around with it and just mess around with it. If you have any shoes that are like completely beat and you could test this out, that would be very, very wise before you actually start messing with um, your official shoe. So that's what I would like to recommend. Just mess around with the dye and see what color you like best because that's what really matters. So I'm going with regular red. And suede or leather dye, doesn't really matter. They're the same thing or they work the same. We need Angelus Soul Bright. Next thing is some sort of way to put the dye onto the outsole. I would recommend using a paintbrush just because you get a whole bunch of um, control by using a paintbrush. Boom. I don't know what this thing's called. I'm just going to call it like a little measuring cup. I know it's not a measuring cup. I don't know what the hell these things are called. But the things you use when you're sick, alright, just don't use it again because we're going to be putting dye and all that in here. But you can see like the tablespoons and this is like good for calculating how much you're going to need. Boom. And you're going to need a bottle that will allow you to shake things up. So this bottle is going to be great. Hey, can I get a quick like on this video for cleaning this bottle up for you guys? Believe it or not, this was one of the first Angelus paint bottles I've ever bought. And I just had to make it look nice and clean for y'all. So... That took like maybe 30 minutes. And then this is the mix that I already got. I actually made this already. So I'm going to be using this mix. I really like the way it looks. But I'm going to still show you how to make it and everything. So this is going to be like kind of, um, I guess, just to show you guys how it works. I'm not going to use that dye. I'm going to use this one because I already made this. But yeah, I'm going to show you still how to make the, uh, the mix. So let's get right to it. Whenever you're working with dye, make sure you put some kind of like towel down or something because this stuff does tend to spill if you're clumsy like me. You don't want to make a big mess. So make sure you put like a towel down to catch the dye. I spilled a whole bunch yesterday. <laughs> so yeah, don't make that mistake. Put a towel down, put something down, man. This part is super simple and straightforward. What we're going to do is mix a half and half solution so half of it is going to be so bright and we're gonna match the exact same half with dye so if I do two teaspoons worth of dye we're going to need two teaspoons worth of so bright so let's start off with the dye first because it does get messy so I want to get this out of the way first make sure you shake up your bottle Let's see if I could do this without spilling this time. So I'm going to do two teaspoons worth. Boom. Hey, I didn't really spill. This is dripping on the side a little bit. No biggie. Make sure you get that because that could cause problems later. Put 
that off to the side. All right, so I have my two teaspoons. Now I'm gonna put it into like my little mixing jar. You can find mixing jars like the first one. Um, you can find this on the site. I only had one with me, so um, this is what I'm using already. So I'm gonna use this bottle instead. I'm gonna pour it in. Like so. Make sure to cap it. Now we need two teaspoons worth of Solbright. Make sure you shake this bottle too. That should be good. Now you're gonna start to get like a like a paste kind of consistency, and that's that's what you're looking for. So we're gonna pour it into the mixing bottle or jar, whatever you want to call it. Oh, it's starting to get messy. It's starting to get messy. Yo, do yourself a favor and don't do this on a carpet or anything like that because your mom, your dad, they're going to get pissed when they see this on the carpet. Make sure you start wiping this off like so and then all we got to do after is make sure that the cap is super tight and then shake this up oh yeah another quick tip I wanted to share with you is to make sure your hands are clean. Make sure there's no dye in your hands. As you can see, I have a little bit of dye um, from just touching it earlier, and I tried to wash my hands. So that will make sure like it doesn't really bleed onto the shoe. So try to get rid of that dye as much as possible, because you don't want to just, boom, just touch your shoes like that. It'll just make a mess, I promise you. So listen to me on that part. That part is very, very important. All right, it's time to start dyeing. Honestly, I think the hardest part of this whole process was just getting the dye into the container without spilling it. This part's probably the easiest. All you're going to do is just take a little bit of the dye that you created and lather it on. You don't have to worry about brush strokes or anything like that just because you need a, just like a small amount. You're going to be doing, let's say, two to three layers just until you're happy. So just watch how I do it. Just be really careful around these areas at the top where the midsole meets the outsole. That's that's basically the only thing you need to worry about. And just let it dry. Don't let it don't let this part sit when it's wet like that. Just like sit it up or something like that. Just find a way to keep this thing tilted. So I'm gonna be doing section by section to make that a little bit easier for me. So let's get started. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. They saying that I'm whack, that's what they told me in the streets Word. Talk behind my back, I never listen when they speak Word. I see these local artists wanna try and rap about me I'm from the whack, but honestly ain't nothing whack about me I'm chilling in the back, you see me trying to keep my peace Word. I'm just so fucking cracked, they almost have to call police Word. Ain't touching money, but I still see all this cash around me cash around You ain't know I'm trying to get it, you should ask about me Yo, I cheated on my girl for some beats Not talking about them headphones either, man, I mean some beats You know, like nine fun to not smad, lip, fly low, J. Dilla so I just finished this first section right here just because this is the first coat you don't really have to worry about coating every single like little crack but I would really recommend tr just try to cover everything that's that's possible so um, like these little these little holes are a little bit harder to get into I'll get into that when the second coat goes on it and also I would recommend you putting your shoe at an angle just in case, um, like the stuff inside the traction area right here, like these little circles, in case you put too much, it might drip. So maybe you want it to drip on a black part like this. It'll be a lot easier um, to just deal with instead of laying it on the other side and having the dye drip on like the uppers, if you get what I'm saying. I'm not sure if I'm being really clear with that, but I think you guys might understand what I'm talking about. 
And yeah, that's how this is looking right now. I'm gonna let it dry and I'll put another coat on top and probably another one following that. So I have to do that and repeat it to um, all of these other icy parts. So I'll get to that. I really think that this is like self-explanatory so I'm not gonna record every single thing that I do, but you guys get the idea, I hope. So I'm gonna come at you guys when everything is nice and fresh. What's good everybody? You're looking at the final product right now. This is three coats of that regular red. It's still a little bit wet, so um, pardon me for that, but this is an idea of how they're looking. It's a very, very easy job. It just takes a lot of time just putting it on and trying to make sure it doesn't go onto your midsole. So um, take your time, let it dry in between coats. I'd say give it about 20 to 30 minutes to dry before you add another coat. Like I said, this is three. You could go ahead and just mess around with it. It's really just all like personal preference. So yeah. There you go. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. This custom is not done, so don't judge me on that. I gotta send these to Kickstradamus, so yeah. Let me hit you with that before and after. Boom, boom. And I'll catch you guys next video. Thank you for watching. I'm out. Peace.